So after five years and over a hundred videos, we're finally going to feature some food in a video that doesn't contain meat in it. I know there are many vegans and vegetarians that watch this channel and it's a miracle that you watch at all given how nearly every video features either Wagyu beef, pork or fried chicken. But today we're visiting the ancient northern capital of Hiraizumi, a town which once even rivalled Kyoto in size and scale. And on our trip we plan to do some meditation, explore one of Japan's most picturesque temples and of course eat some vegan dishes. I say we because my good friend Ryotaro is going to be coming along as well. And who knows, amidst the meditation and the vegan cuisine, I might come back a better person. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty unlikely. Very unlikely. <laughs> so we're at a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Motsuji Temple. It's been here since 850 so, AD? Yeah, AD, so it's almost, almost like 1,200 years. 1,200 years. Yes. Older than Ryotaro, even. Oh, it's just two years older than that. Yeah. And uh, we're going to do something called Zazen, which is a Buddhist practice. Uh, the best way to summarize it up is uh, it's that thing where they hit you with a stick while That's, you that, that is too much of a summarizing way. Bit of a simplification. But yeah. uh, what's the actual purpose of this Zazen kind of Buddhist practice? Right. So it's almost like a meditation. Meditation. Yeah, yeah. But um, this, is, this is to stimulate your five senses. Stimulate your five senses. And wow. enable you to concentrate even more than you can. Wow. Or I so can, by the end of this, can. I'll be like in touch with myself. In touch with yourself, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds very romantic, but it's All right. not. All right, well, let's go and stimulate our five senses. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah. Zazen literally means seated meditation, with the posture requiring the practitioner to sit with folded legs and arms on a small cushion. For one hour, we sat in silence with the impending presence of the stick. The awakening stick is used to gently slap the meditator to reset their concentration or to reinvigorate those who are struggling to meditate under tiredness or stress. It's not a form of punishment, you actually ask for it by bowing and putting your palms together. And unsurprisingly, it was difficult for me to hide my delight at Ryotaro getting whacked. It's more difficult than you think to concentrate, especially when you are incredibly aware of your feet being frozen solid by the cold temperatures. Uh, the stick didn't hurt, thankfully. You kind of find yourself lost in the smell of the incense, the cool, crisp morning air, the sound of the bell being rung. You feel you're in a heightened state of awareness with your senses, and uh, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. It's a nice way of starting the day, I guess. But given it's the morning, it's still nine o'clock, uh, I was trying a little bit to uh, try not to fall asleep. Uh, it's easily done when you're doing that. Before heading for lunch, I asked our guide about the kind of benefits you'd get from doing Zazen regularly. And you could summarize the experience in three words. Three words. Uh, what would those words be? Refreshing, concentrating, uh, crispy whacked. What? Oh, crisp being whacked. <laughs> it's crispy whacked. No, crispy. That's some sort of biscuit snack. <laughs> crispy <laughs> whacked. Crispy whacked. See, you can think up new products for biscuits. <laughs> crispy you come whacked. And meditate, yeah. <laughs> Having meditated for an hour and being whacked with a stick, we went for an early lunch at a nearby restaurant serving vegan cuisine inspired by Zen Buddhism. So today is the day I finally give something back to vegan viewers. Recently we've been having a lot of meat in the videos, in fact I think it's, it's always just been meat in the videos. This is the first time we've actually had some sort of vegan dish. First time in how many years? In five years. Five years. Uh, it's called Shojin Ryori. Shojin literally means Buddhist cuisine and Ryori means cooking. Uh, and it's an array of wonderful multicolored dishes. Each and every one 
is vegan. Actually, at first glance, it doesn't look like a vegan no, kind of all. dish, does it? That's when you all. look at everything, you think, oh, these mushrooms must contain some sort of chicken or pork in. Mm. This and tempura, tempura must have some kind of fish in. Yeah, yeah. It's all vegan, 100% vegan. Yeah, so it's sesame tofu. Sesame tofu. Sesame tofu with the wasabi on top. Mm. And there's some vegetable tempura. Wow. Uh, it's a koya tofu and deep, deep fried and uh, they put some uh, hot, like, you know, warm sauce on top with the mushrooms. It's a sashimi konyaku. Konyaku is a potato, it's better than a potato. And uh, they actually uh, slice it so that it looks like a sashimi. It's a soba and a buckwheat noodle on the side and there's a seaweed on the top. It's actually a sticky rice and uh, wrapped with uh, uh, seaweed. Tempura is an absolute miracle. You take a nice freshly picked vegetable and then you dip it in batter and it just makes it so much better. You know, tempura was actually the first Japanese food I ever had back when I was about nine. And that was when I decided Japanese food must be good. Yeah. <laughs> it all started there. To be fair, one of the reasons we haven't made a video on vegan or vegetarian cuisine is it's quite difficult to come by if you're eating out. Many people uh, that, who I know who live in Japan that are vegans uh, cook at home and cook at home and that's the sure. way they get around it. Uh, if you eat something like soba noodles or udon, udon noodles, noodles, yes, they are vegan, but the dipping sauce broth they come in usually uh, often contains things like fish. Tempura is a good one though. Tempura as tempura. well. Tempura, yeah, it's a good one. But the uh, the dipping sauce actually contains uh. the uh, the fish broth. But so what what you need to be careful is that the uh, um, we have two kinds of broth like when it comes to Japanese food. Normally it's a, a tuna based broth tuna and bread. also kombu, which is seafood based broth, which is okay for vegans to eat or uh, eat okay. with. So um, if you ask a restaurant. Um, for like eating soba or udon, and I ask them to actually bring the uh, the kombu, which is the seaweed uh, okay. broth, and that you can get by. Oh, okay, that's quite a useful mm. point there. Uh, a good friend of mine who is a vegan, his name's Regan. When he lived in Japan, he used to just eat nuts from the supermarket, <laughs> nuts and bananas. But I think he was just being a bit austere. Yeah, there are ways around it. So if you do your research, you don't have to let it get in the way of your trip. So we're about to journey out into the countryside to see one of the most picturesque temples in all of Tohoku. And we're going to get there by an ancient method of transportation. The same kind of transportation they would have used about a thousand years ago. Uh, I am of course talking about go-karts. Uh, so we're going to drive to this like, really famous temple, the photogenic temple, with this go-kart. And uh, it's got 50cc engine and uh, um, it could speed up to 70 kilometers per hour. And how much is that in, in the miles? Not a clue, mate. I've seen a few cars driving down the road with uh, rather surprised and shocked looking drivers seeing a go-kart with a chubby foreigner just driving it down the road. It's a bit weird, I think. Quite a rare sight. Yeah. Yes! I love it. It's great. Excellent. Fantastic. So, uh, here we are at the uh, Takoku no Iwaya. Takoku no Iwaya. Iwaya, okay. Yeah, Iwaya, yeah. yeah. So there's a there's a temple in a cave. Yeah, no, it's pretty dramatic looking yeah. spot. Um, it's got a bit of a sinister story to it. Sinister story? There used to be uh, uh, Ainu people, the native Japanese people, living mm. here uh, in a cave before this uh, temple was built. But the Japanese, other, the new Japanese people came in tried to get rid of them. So you got rid of the natives, forced them out? Yeah, forced them out. Took and over their then, cave. So they actually they took the cave and then they actually built the temple to cover the cave. Bloody hell. Yeah, it's a bit... Um, that yeah, is quite sinister. Harsh. Yeah, it was. Steal harder, their yeah. cave yeah. and build a temple in front of it. Mm. So that they can get it's in. It's a bit extreme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Within the temple, there are 33 statues of the god of war, Bishamonten. However, they're only put on public display every 33 years. And given that the last time was 2010, you'll have to wait until 2043 when you can revisit the temple in your flying car. While you're waiting 33 years though, you can still grab yourself some good fortune. So now I bought the good luck charm and uh, this good luck charm is what's said to be the strongest in the whole Japan. Why is that? I'm not sure, but it's said to be the strongest. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, well, people say that make you rich, uh, make you uh, make a butler go away. And make your what go away? 
bad luck. I thought you said make your butler go away. <laughs> oh, but, oh, but. <laughs> that's not, that's but not good away. luck. That's terrible. Ba- bad I hate luck. my butler goes away. Yeah, bad luck, go away. Right. And also, Chris, go away. Uh, it says that the uh, uh, you should hang this uh, onto your uh, house entrance. Does it Get... say anything particular? Well, here, I, I can't really read it, actually. You can't read it? The best 1,000 yen you've ever spent. Yeah, it might work. You know, it may just take Chris away from my sight and stuff. And it did! And it did! And it did! Despite getting slapped in the face with numerous flies while driving, I do quite want a go-kart now, as fast as a scooter, but with the comfort of a real chair. The perfect way to explore the countryside. Hiraizumi is about a two hour ride north from Tokyo by bullet train or 30 minutes from Sendai. And if you're interested in visiting any of the places we visited on our trip, you can find the details in the description box below. But for now guys, as always, many thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I, uh, I want one. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know how much they cost or where to buy them, but I want a go-kart for Christmas. So if Father Christmas is watching, you know what to do.